I'm Jesse Yost with Comscope Ruckus. Today we're going to discuss VLANs, VLAN pooling, and DHCP services within Ruckus Cloud. Here we are back again in my Ruckus Cloud instance. Today we're going to talk about VLANs and DHCP. At the most basic level, the VLAN can be assigned to a WLAN. And we can show an example of that if we go over to wireless networks and we look at our arena VLAN here, you can see all the way on the right, VLAN 20 is listed. If we drill down further into it and go to edit that network, clicking on advanced, we can see the VLAN ID is defined here. Now, in order to make this work, we need to make sure that our AP ports are also configured to support these VLANs. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this. I'm gonna take a look at our venue here. I'm just going to go into the home network and I'm going to click on settings, Wi-Fi settings. So we can take a look at some of the actual AP configurations. So clicking over on the network tab, we can see here uh, we've got LAN ports and we can change or take a look at our model specific settings. Now on APs with single ports, so one ethernet port, you are going to see that the configuration is locked down. So these are typically your uplink ports. And since it's only a AP with a single port, um, that's gonna be your uplink and your PoE. But these are locked down to trunk ports that are untagged on VLAN one and then are supporting all other VLAN members. But if you had an AP that had multiple uh, ports, let's just check take the 550 here for an example, um, you can actually start to change the way some of these ports function. So we have other videos that explain what the differences are between the access, the general, the trunk port. Um, so you can go take a look at those. But if you look, uh, we are able to change those here and you can see our uplink port LAN 5 is locked out. So again, that is the trunk. It is uh, untagging on one and then supporting all other tagged VLANs. So if you're using if you're using VLANs on uh, your WLAN, you definitely need to make sure that the port configuration supports what you're trying to do. Not only does the AP port configuration need to support what you're doing from a VLAN perspective, the upstream switch that the AP is connected to needs to be configured with those VLANs as well. But what if you wanted to have more than one VLAN assigned to your WLAN? That's where the function of VLAN pooling comes into play. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this. We're gonna go over to services, VLAN pools. So you see I have two VLAN pools here and if I select this first one and choose edit, we can see the definition of the pool. So it is called home pool. Uh, I don't have a description on it and it has VLANs two, 30, 40, and 50. Now I could put up to 64 different VLANs in here and you can do VLAN ranges as well to define the pool. Now that the pool's been defined, what do you do with it? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of the pool. We've already got that here. I'm gonna go over to wireless networks. So as you could have guessed, you apply it to a wireless network. If we look over here on the right-hand side, we can see that my play DHCP has that home pool defined. I'm gonna go ahead and drill into this play DHCP WLAN, choose edit network, go over to the advanced tab, and you can see that this is where we turn on VLAN pooling. So you just need to tick the radio box to on, and then from your dropdown, select any of the pre-configured pools that you've already created, or optionally add a pool here. We would also need to make sure that the VLANs that we've specified in this pool and applied to this WLAN are configured on the AP ports as well as the switch ports, much like we discussed earlier. Once you're happy with the configurations that you've made, you've got the VLAN pool defined, you can go ahead and choose save and apply these changes to the WLAN. With the VLAN pool created and applied to the WLAN, any users connecting into the Play DHCP WLAN now are going to be assigned to one of the VLANs in the pool based on a hash of their MAC address. And since we're determining the VLAN based off of a hash of the client's MAC address, they're always going to be placed into the same VLAN so that we can do seamless roaming. And this configuration could work from an external DHCP server standpoint. You just need to make sure that you've got pools defined for all of the VLANs that you're specifying in the pool. Let's take a look now at 
the DHCP services offered within Ruckus Cloud. I'm gonna go ahead and go over to services and then you can see we're here on the DHCP tab. Now I've got a few already defined, but if we wanted to add more, we could certainly do that from the add DHCP service profile. So you can see all of the required fields here. Uh, we can specify the name, the VLAN, the subnet uh, address, mask, the start and end address, as well as primary and secondary DNS and lease time. Uh, I'm not gonna create a new one here, but we can discuss what I've already done. So I've got VLANs 2, 30, 40, 50. I've got ranges specified for all of those, uh, those pools and they are active on a venue currently. So once the DHCP service profile has been configured, we need to apply it to the venue. I'll show you where I've done that uh, in my environment. So I'm gonna go over to venues here. I'm going to specify the venue where I need to apply these DHCP service profiles, and I'm gonna click on the DHCP tab. Now, if this is the first time you're configuring this, you will likely need to turn this DHCP service toggle to on. So right now you can see that mine is on. Uh, I am running simple DHCP and you can see here some information about how this is working. So on the simple DHCP configuration, I am doing DHCP and NAT from each AP in this venue. If you wanted to change the configuration of the DHCP service for this venue, or just set it up for the first time, you can click over here on Manage DHCP Service. So you can see in this little wizard, the first option here is allowing you to change your DHCP configuration. We've got simple DHCP, multiple AP DHCP, and hierarchical DHCP. When you select each one of these, it's kind of going to give you a graphic representation of the differences. I know that might be a little hard to see on the screen here. I'll try to zoom in a little bit so you can see what that looks like, but uh, you can change that or define it here. Once you've chosen and made your configuration uh, choice, you can choose next, and then you apply uh, which DHCP service profiles that we created previously you wanna put um, on this particular uh, venue. So you can see that I have set the all four um, that I created to 30, 40, 50 uh, in this venue, and you can only select up to four profiles. So if you're having uh, Ruckus Cloud do your DHCP for you, you can only specify up to four service profiles to be applied. So once that's done, you can choose save and the changes will be updated. Clicking on the DHCP service profiles tab, we can see again confirmation of the profiles that are uh, applied to this venue. So VLAN 2, 30, 40, 50. If you're using DHCP service profiles along with VLAN pooling, you just need to make sure that you've got an alignment there. So if I had a service profile uh, for VLAN 2, 30, and 40, but my VLAN pool was for 2, 30, 40, and 50, um, that, could be a, that could be an issue. So I wouldn't have a pool for 50. So any clients that try to get into 50 based off their hash, wouldn't be assigned an address. So you just need to make sure that the configuration is symmetrical there. You've got enough coverage on the DHCP service profiles for all of the VLANs that you've configured in the pool. The last thing that I'm gonna mention is that you cannot enable DHCP services on a venue where mesh APs are residing. So if I go over to my venues and I look at my home network, if I look at DHCP here, you can see that it is currently off and I am not able to toggle it on. And it will tell you, you cannot activate the DHCP service on this venue because it's already enabling mesh settings. So if you've got a venue with mesh, um, you are not gonna be able to use the DHCP uh, services on that venue. I know we hit a lot of information in a short amount of time, but hopefully this can give you guys an idea of what to take a look at if you're having an issue with a VLAN pool or a DHCP service profile. As always, take a look at the latest cloud release notes. Uh, the cloud platform is evolving all the time, so new functionality might be out there. So I would use that as your source of truth. Thanks for watching, and we hope you can join us next time.